This is a 13 year old in 1997. We'll call him Alex. We're going to follow Alex for the next 24 years to see how his life turns out. For now, we know he's Hispanic. He lives with his dad and stepmom. They aren't very supportive or very involved in his life. His family's net worth is only $2,000. But despite all that, he says he's pretty optimistic about the future. In fact, most teens in 1997 agreed or strongly agreed that their futures are pretty optimistic. These are a small portion of the 9,000 kids who are part of a survey called the National Longitudinal Survey of Youth. It means researchers will follow them from their teenage years well into adulthood. So we'll do that too. But we'll look at something specific. A year from now, in 1998, a researcher named Vincent Folliti will publish a paper that changes the way we think about childhood. It'll show that the traumatic and stressful things we experience as kids have a lifelong effect on our health, relationships, financial security, and everything else we value. So let's track some of these adverse experiences and see how their lives turn out. Here are 400 of the kids who took part in the survey. I've highlighted the kids who have uninvolved parents. Here's who's been bullied so far. And here are the kids growing up in risky home environments. This could mean the kid doesn't have a quiet place to study, or there's something that destabilizes their life, like parents struggling with drugs. We'll also track when kids are held back in school, suspended from school, or when they see someone shot with a gun. And we'll add up these adverse experiences. In 1997, here's what that looks like. The top group has experienced none of these bad things thus far, the middle group has experienced some, and the bottom group has experienced a lot of bad things. Okay, let's go forward a few years. It's 2001, senior year of high school for a lot of these kids. So what kinds of adverse experiences have these kids endured thus far? This is who grew up in riskier home and family environments. This is who was held back in school. This is who was suspended. This is who was bullied. This is who saw someone getting shot with a gun. Notably, Black and Hispanic kids were far more likely to be in the bottom group. All of this relates to how well kids did in school. Here's their final high school GPAs. The bottom group is much more likely to struggle in the classroom. And then they graduate. And some of them will go to college. I wanna take a second to talk about college. We often treat it like a place where people learn skills to eventually do a job. But college is also a safe and structured place for people to fend off adulthood for a bit and take time to figure out what role they want in the world. Psychologist Jeffrey Arnett argues there's a period between childhood and adulthood called emerging adulthood, and college is a great place for emerging adults. In fact, research has shown that even one year of college or technical school can mitigate some of the effects of adverse childhood experiences. Let's go to the next year to see who goes to college. It tends to be the kids who experience the fewest adverse experiences, Meanwhile, the kids who experienced a lot of bad things go directly into the workforce, or they get stuck in limbo. Okay, let's go forward a few years. It's 2010 now. Lots of people are done with college. So who has a four-year college degree? It's mostly kids who had pretty good childhoods. And if we look at their incomes, we can see that a huge portion of kids in the bottom group are struggling financially. Okay, let's go forward a few years. It's now 2021, and we can clearly see that their childhoods had an effect on their incomes, but it also had an effect on everything else. This is who was a victim of a violent crime. This is who said they were never or only sometimes happy in the past month. People who endure more adverse experiences as a kid report more health problems when they grow up. Ultimately, research shows it can lead to premature death. 
So, how's Alex doing? He's 37 now, living with his partner and two kids. He struggled with his weight for much of his adult life, and it affects his overall health. The last time he was asked about his mental health, he said he was depressed some of the time. After decades of working as a cook, he recently moved to a retail job, but his annual income has always been around $20,000. When we're young, we have so little control over our lives, but we tell ourselves that eventually, we'll get to shape our own lives. Then we turn 18 and we're expected to be adults and figure things out, and if we fail, we're punished. We're blamed for not going to college, for being unhealthy, for being poor, for not being able to afford health care and food and housing. But it's not just our fault. And it's not Alex's fault that he experienced so many bad things that had a lifelong effect on his life. This is the same teenager we met 24 years ago. The world we've built has shaped his life. So to an extent, I think he's our collective responsibility. They all are. 